Hi, my name is Paul from High School Physics Explained. What's this dome over here? It's called a plasma dome and you can buy it at a novelty store for not too much money. You connect it to the power supply and you have this central pole. You'll notice streams of colors coming from the central pole down to the glass. Let's turn the light off so you can see the streams coming off from the central pole. When I put my finger on it like so, you can see I attract a much stronger stream. In fact, if I put multiple fingers on, not only will I attract those streams, but they seem to cause my fingertips to glow. The question is, what is going on? Well, stay tuned. Today I'm going to explain how the plasma ball works. So the first thing you'll notice here is that there's a couple of components to do with our plasma coil. So here is the Tesla coil. And then we have our glass dome up the top. And it is filled with a number of noble gases. Now there are a number of noble gases here. The predominant one is neon, but there can be also some argon, some xenon, and some krypton. The Tesla coil produces a high voltage alternating supply. We're talking about in the order of two to five kilovolts, and the frequency is in the order of about 35 kilohertz. So a high potential difference is being developed here. And of course, at the edges, the potential is going to be significantly lower. So we're going to get a potential difference between the inner dome and the outer dome. Now what that does is it produces a radio frequency electromagnetic wave. So in essence, basically we have a radio wave emanating out from the Tesla coil. Now radio waves cause electrons to move. So for example, a radio wave in a metal wire will cause the electrons to move very quickly. In fact, uh, radio antennas work on that very principle. You are experiencing radio waves now, but those electrons are particularly tightly bound and they're generally not gonna move a lot. So what about this material here? Well, the radio wave that is being emanating out is actually quite high in energy. As a result, it causes the gases here to ionize. Now, what do I mean by ionize? Ionize, in essence, is that the electrons are being ripped off the atoms of the neon, argon, xenon, and krypton. Now, that means the atoms in here are not in their neutral state. They're separated into their positive nuclei and their negative charges as they're being ripped off. Now, that, in essence, refer refers to the fourth state of matter, and that is plasma. Plasma is, in essence, a gas that has received so much energy, a fair amount of the atoms lose their electrons. And as they lose their electrons, we now have a sea of charged particles. In fact, most of the universe is plasma. And so although we see the effect of plasma in this tone, other examples of plasma can be seen, for example, in terms of lightning. When we look at, for example, uh, nebula in astronomical uh, images and so forth, what we are seeing there is plasma, uh, they're, and they're releasing uh, light. Why do we get these streaming effects? Well, because we have this potential difference from the inner dome to the outer dome, we have electrons wanting to move to the outer dome. So we have a, a flow of electrons, but those electrons aren't always loose. They often jump in and out from their atom. And so when an electron, for example, let's say this is our nucleus, I'm doing a very simple model here. When an electron is around an atom, and it's a very simple model, the electron jump out of the atom, and as a result, they will absorb the energy from the electromagnetic wave and jump out, and of course, it can be used to conduct electricity. But when some electrons jump back in, they go to what we refer to as a lower energy state, and they lose energy, and that loss of energy translates to a photon of light. So as they pop in and pop out, they're gonna release light. And so you have the stream of electrons popping in and popping out, moving from the high potential to the lower potential, and they will heat up the gas and cause the gas to emanate light as they emit photons 
on and off as they stream out. So that in essence is what caused these tendrils of plasma. It's these electrons moving from the inner dome to the outer dome, but in the process they're going to be releasing light. And the light is actually unique to the element. So if we were to do a spectral analysis of the light, in other words, break the light up into its individual frequencies from the radio, from a, let's say, a spectroscope, then you have a particular signature of frequencies and those signatures are unique to the elements that we have in here. So the colors here are indicative of the elements that we have in this dome. But not only do these electrons emanate from here, at the glass level, what we have is, glass is sort of what we refer to as a dielectric. So the molecules in the uh, glass, and I'll make this magnified, the glass, they sort of become polarized a little bit. So we get a little positive on this side and a little negative on this side. And so as these electrons go across, they continue streaming off the glass as they interact with the glass. Now you don't see anything coming off here, but they are coming off. So if we could concentrate them, then we might see some reaction, some sparking, and I'll show you in a demonstration shortly how that might work. But ultimately these electrons are trying to get to the neutral position. So if we touch the dome, what was going to happen? So here you see me touching the dome. And now what we get is this really strong stream of plasma going to the top. Now, why is that? Well, I'm connected to the ground. And so these electrons are going to have a much easier path going to me than just into the air. And so we get a lot more flow of charge going through this stream. Now there's another factor going on here. So apart from the fact that I'm providing an easier path for the electrons to get to ground and basically move from the very high potential level here to the low um, in magnitude anyway to here, we're going to also see that this stream is a lot tighter. Now one of the interesting factors here is that this stream of electrons develop its own magnetic field. And so what we get here is what we refer to as magnetic focusing. And so not only is this stream brighter because we have more charges flowing, but we also have a narrowing of this line. So it's much stronger. But notice how it is quite strong. Now, what would happen if I were to touch on the side as I demonstrated? And how is this behavior different? Well, we're going to do that and demonstrate that not only is this bright in light, but this is also high in energy in terms of heat. So here I'm touching the, at the side, and do you notice how the streams arc to my fingers, but then they rise up like this and break and come back to this position over here? Why? Now, the thing is, is that these streams are hot, and as you are aware, hot air rises, so the temperature is going to increase, taking the filament along as, the temp as it rises, but then the length is so long that it eventually breaks that cycle and it starts at the zero position. Now, the last question is, is why do, you not, do we see the tendrils outside? Well, well, it has to do with atmospheric pressure. The outside has, an, has a pressure of, let's say, one atmosphere, but it's considerably lower than one atmosphere on the inside. And that's why these tendrils can develop, because these gases are actually at low pressure. So there you have it, a plasma ball. In subsequent videos, I'm going to demonstrate a few great tricks that you can do with this thing. But not only will I demonstrate those things, I'm going to also give you the scientific explanation as to why they occur. So stay tuned for that. Well, I hope that helps you understand the concepts. Thanks for watching. Please remember, like, share, and subscribe. And by the way, drop a comment down below if the video particularly has been useful. And finally, consider supporting me via Patreon. The idea is to develop resources and equipment to continue to teach physics at a high school level. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.